Hello everybody, welcome to Own Automotive. This is workshop diary number five, and we will be assembling this gorgeous 1952 XK120 fixed head. But before we do that, I wanna go over a bit of a haul from the last show that I showed in the last episode. And I bought boxes of parts, not individual parts. So that's kind of fun because we can go on the discovery and see what I got. Okay, I'm gonna start with this chrome bundle I bought. This is the first thing I got. Dad's gonna help me try to identify some of this stuff. This is the only one I know so far. I think it goes, it, it's kind of the cover that is uh, part of the quarter window opener on an XK. How about that? What do you think? Safety. Looks like a lens maybe bezel. We got two of those. They say safe, safety ray 270. Does anybody need those? I'll send them to you if you need them. Got some window winder hardware. Now this, that does look familiar. MGB early. That's early MGB. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, hinge, hinge panel. It's again with MGB maybe. No. Look at that switch. Hmm. That's funky. Uh, oh, these are always handy. All these um, switch gear. Um, wiper, bezel. wiper bezels and switch gear. Um, what do you call these things? Uh, nuts almost. Overdrive. Normal. That's definitely MGB, isn't it? Uh -huh. Incredible. All right. Well, that was pretty good. I paid $20 for this. I'm happy. Just for this hardware, which is hard to find. It's the kind of stuff when you need it, you can never find it. But if you buy it like this and in bulk and organize it, you can have it for future restorations. And I got a whole bunch of chrome screws here. These are super helpful when we're doing the inside of cars and we want the hardware to look nice and pretty. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's put this away now. If anybody needs these, let me know. Send me your way. Put this all away now. Oh, these bezels are nice. I'm happy with that purchase. The next thing I got here is this collection of cylinder head hardware look at that so i really do like this kind of stuff we even have the verniers here so this is an early vernier and i think is this that's an that's a later one mm -hmm. so for some reason they scalloped it the cam actually attaches in these holes and actually when you when they um when the car's over revved it's these that actually slip first it's the first thing that gives and then the valves go into the pistons. But oh yeah, there's another one. So this is a this is kind of in between. So this is really interesting. It shows the whole progression from early Vernier to the Series 2 with four holes for the cam. And this is, um, I don't know why they scalloped this. If anybody knows why on the later cars they scalloped them like this, please, I would love to know that. And again, we have hardware here that is so essential when it goes missing. If you need one of these um, supply feed line bolts, it's absolutely gold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and clean some of this hardware up and save some of it. I don't know how many of these rusty old studs we'll need, so likely some metal recycling. We've got flywheel bolts here, a lot of extra domed nuts. I think it's pretty handy. Even got some cheese head hardware here. Oh, look at that, an old original GKN course. So yeah, I'm happy with this. Uh, I think it was a good buy. What do you think? Yeah, not bad, eh? Good, good for future cylinder head work. So this is interesting. This is from a shop that used to do just Jaguars. So it's neat to have their collection and expand on it. All right, I've been looking high and low for the next part to put on this glorious XK. And I come to the conclusion it's going to be the window wiper system. And I think I have everything I need right here. Super happy to find everything. Now this is the wiper motor itself, the transmission units. These tuck right in underneath the windshield, underneath the dash, so it's good to get those in early. And I have the cable itself as well here. So just gonna go and have a closer look. So the wiper motor, this is the original wiper motor to the car. You can see it's a model CR, eighth month of 1951. 
I just had the cover cad plated. Looks like I got enough life left on these brushes to reuse them. So I'll just be some careful assembly. The wiring is super simple, just two leads coming out. Now we have the mount here. And fortunately, I was able to find a new mount. This is the old one and somebody has remanufactured the original style mount, which I'm super grateful for. There's the part number there, 3556 with Barrett's. Uh, I don't think these are the original wiper arms, but I do have some beautiful Trico triple action blades. So I'll be able to put those on and do some general assembly here with the transmission as well. So my next step, I think I'm just gonna clean up this, this um, wiper line a little bit and also repaint this housing, this body housing. It has a wrinkle finish on it. So I'm gonna put a very, very light coat of black on there, preserve that finish. And then we're going to start putting it together. Now fast forward, I've refinished the field case for the wiper motor. And I just refinished it with some upholstery paint. It's super thin, so it retains that original wrinkle finish, which I love so much. See that? Yeah, this thing's looking wonderful. So now I'm going to attempt to assemble this motor uh, with you guys coming along. So the first thing I've got to do is put the armature in. I'm just going to assume this armature is good. If it needs to be rewound, this will go to an auto electric shop, but we'll give it a go, right? We'll just see if it'll work out of the box. So I'm just cleaning the brush contact surfaces here. They look pretty good. And we're going to put the armature in the field case. Just put a dab of grease here. Uh, not too much, but just a bit. And we will put get that grease off my fingers. We will put this into the field case like so. Make sure it spins freely in the field case. It's nice and smooth. I think that's going to work well. Okay, that's good news. Now we need to assemble the brushes. Uh, this is where I wish I had another hand. So it's going to go in like this around these contacts, like so, All right. there we are. Okay, so that's looking good. Now I put some sheathing on the two leads here, hoping that I can slide it through this bake like case. That is the goal, and um, my red sheathing is a little thick so we'll see how this goes oh yeah there we go woohoo just gonna seat the case the, the cap sorry everything has to line up okay there we are seating it right down there is an adjustment for the end flow to the armature it was set from the factory now the two leads poking out here go into these grub screws and that's how it'll attach to the main harness. I'm going to seal the deal here. I have the three original fasteners that have been CAD plated. And these are some of the very few fasteners on the next K120 that are Phillips. And that's because Sir William Lyons did not want to pay the patent. So any Phillips hardware that was on these cars came from outside suppliers such as this Lucas uh, CR wiper motor. Okay, so next I want to hook up the cable and I just painted up the sheathing here, the covering for the cable. It'll go into this slot and I think it'll receive this. Let's go on top or below. Looks like below actually. It only goes in one way it seems. Uh, let's really get the greasing here now. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So then pivot around the, the gearbox here. Oh, it's gonna be really hard to do. Take it out now. Oh yeah, one thing I should note too, the gears, look at that. Nice metal gears, no plastic to fail like a modern car. Okay, so this is gonna go in here like this. And is this gonna have to come out? And 
Voila. So now with it assembled at this stage, I will grease up the gears, that's for sure. Just get it everywhere in here. I think from the factory they actually filled these things full of grease. It didn't really do a whole lot, but I'll just coat everything that I can here. Don't plan on coming in here for a while. All right. All right, let's see how this goes. I have power. Come on. Well, it's working. Okay, so watch when I tighten this lock up down. There's a bushing in the case there, and there's a bushing in the case here that support the thing. That looks pretty dry a lube, doesn't it? Well, I probably could use maybe a, well, it's an oil light bushing, so it, I use the Gibbs. Use some oily stuff on it. I think it's just making dry. it nice looks pretty dry, yeah. It's pretty dry. So far so good, but you try to tighten that thing down. That's when that. mayhem comes. Actually looking pretty oh wait, let's see. Look at that. <laughs> Actually we recorded that whole thing. Awesome. I think it's gonna work now. Woohoo! Ah yes! Yes! Sorry, this has been a Okay, one final test here before I commit and attach this to the car permanently. Come on. Woohoo! Okay, let's get it on the car. Just sizing up the bracket here that holds the wiper motor. It's right in the corner of the engine bay. And unfortunately, in this area, it will shroud that big hole down there. See the big hole, one inch hole in the bottom? That's for the main wiring harness. So I'm gonna put the wiring harness in first before the wiper motor. So uh, let's change directions a bit and find something else to do. Sorting, sorting, sorting. Uh, yeah, it's been a lot of work, but it's monotonous work and I kind of enjoy it. You just find interesting stuff and run into interesting fasteners doing this. Now this drawer, I'll run it through the parts washer, reuse it. I can integrate it into this storage solution we have, which are these stacked drawers. Really the lifeblood of the shop when it comes to doing restorations. So a lot of this harbor ended up in my own XK cylinder head drawer. So I'll give you a little tour of this. Um, this is what I kind of need and it's essential for just some cylinder head assembly. Some of the interesting stuff are some nickels. I use those to block off the spark plug holes when I paint cylinder heads. I have some acorn nuts here that have no grease on them and I use them to paint the cylinder heads without losing the torque on, this, on the studs. And so a lot of that that came from this blue bin went into here and I have way too many pieces of harbor now. Look at all those cam cover bolts now, oil feed, oil feed bolts, cotters, keepers, all the thick hardware washers that go under the cylinder head nuts. Yeah, stuff like this is just so essential for doing restorations. And when you run out of one thing, that's it. It stops you dead in your tracks. So yeah, this is pretty interesting. These are the cam cover studs, very specific. This is the oil breather studs. And stuff like this is really nice. It makes my assembly process so much quicker. So it does take time to sort this stuff, when you do, man, things just go so much smoother. Now there was a nugget of gold in that blue bin and that's this right here. This is a half inch domed finish nut. And in the last episode, I was trying to recreate this look on the back of the XK120. This is a special nut that goes right here. So I put a 7 16 cylinder head nut there, but this, this domed half inch is kind of what it should have. 
And I'd like to get some more of these. So if anybody has an original, please let me know. Maybe we can uh, make this one that much more correct. And again, having access to cylinder head hardware, these are thick cylinder head washer hardware underneath those dome nuts there. And just having access to this stuff immediate and quick and right there makes the whole process go so much faster. Next up, I want to do the wiper transmission. It's pretty simple. There's these gear, little gear boxes. They take the cable from the wiper motor and as it goes back and forth, it oscillates the wiper back and forth. Uh, what can I say? These conduits are pretty ingenious. They have, they're just a spiral here. And then the craftspeople at Jaguar just kind of made a protrusion at the end that kind of nestles into this area here. It's held down with these little clamps. So we'll get this in the car. And one thing I'm going to do, which is interesting, is uh, the grommet here. This is the grommet for the protrusion of the wiper motor arm, of the wiper gearbox arm, sorry, through the body. It's not a very elegant piece, um, but uh, I guess it works. I hope it'll fit. I'm probably not going to put it in with silicone. I'm unsure right now. Hopefully it'll just fit nicely in there. Um, yeah, let's put it on the car. So you join me from inside the coupe. I can just uh, move over here slightly and center the camera. And this is where the main instrument binnacle will be. And you can see the two grommets here for the wiper system. And I got this cute little assembly with those transmissions. And we're gonna put it up and into the car. Now I have left everything loose, so hopefully I can reach those two grommets. Got one going through, one started, and got to get up here though. One through, balance through, and then, okay, we're in. There it is. So that does it for the wiper transmission install. I'm gonna leave it loosened here until the cable's fully inserted and that way I can have it run as free as possible. And I tell you, I'm kind of surprised that there's just a rubber grommet here. All the later cars definitely have a wiper escutcheon or a piece of chrome finish here. And this just has rubber poking out. That's the way it was. Also, I should comment on the corrosion. So yeah, window seals hold in moisture and they corrode, so this has been rust converted and top coated, and it should be good now for the rest of the car's life. Time to do the wiring harness. Yes, all this is gonna go in the fixed head. It's hard to believe there's this much wiring in a car from 1952. So I'll just give my initial impressions because I've been studying the wiring harness. I've been studying the photographs of this wiring throughout the car and looking at images of other original cars. And I think that the way that they arranged this in the car was really a complete mess. They just kind of fastened it to whatever was close by and it's, there's way too many pigtails and separate pieces. Um, but I'm going to try my best to make it look nice and tidy. On the positive note, this wiring harness from AutoSparks in England is just incredible. The tracer, the loom, the sheathed wiring, it's a thing of beauty. It totally refreshes the electrical system and I'm in love with uh, details like this. Now, moving over to the right here, we can see some of the main electrical components. So this is the double relay that really controls the tail lights. This is the fuse box, it's all been replated. And the voltage regulator here for the generator. Um, this one is dead and I'd love to be able to repair it. Uh, if, you, if you know any contacts or any people on the planet that are capable of fixing this unit, please let me know. Otherwise I'll just have to buy a new one. And I also have the hardware here to mount the wiring harness to the body and they're again a mess we have loop clamps we have these unusual clamps i forget what they're called that just clip into the body and they're really hard to get out without ruining them we also have these ones here i think these were on the parcel shelf uh, jaguar could not make up their minds when it came to fasteners so my first step here is the main harness this is the one i'm going to put in first 
right here, this is the dashboard, so that's pretty easy to locate. And then it goes over here to the driver's side and then through the firewall right here. And now I have a grommet. I gotta put this grommet on. Unfortunately, the wiring harness didn't come with a grommet kit, so I'm gonna make do with what I have here in the shop. Now to get this grommet through all this wiring, this pigtail wiring, this isn't really a pigtail, but the rest of the main harness, I'm gonna try wrapping it up. Let's see how it goes. mush it down here and uh, here we go so oh, man it's, it's like packing lunch okay let's see how this goes starting at the very end here Feeding it through. Uh, I don't know, everybody. Let's see. I'm gonna really try twisting in here. Come on, please work. Don't just bunch up. Now, the reason why I like the saran wrap or the plastic wrap is that. It should protect the sheathing on the wiring from fraying, which this would uh, really be a lot of stress on it otherwise. Could also put a little silicone in right now if it doesn't want to go. But I think we're getting somewhere here. Look at that. Awesome. Okay. This technique is golden. I love it. Last bit, <laughs> that grommet is uh, stretched within an inch of its life. <sighs> it's hard on the hands, that's for sure. Oh, I think we're gonna make it. Coming around the turn, there it is, all right. Back inside now, and first I'm going to talk about this wiper transmission again. One of these transmission units has to be upside down, and I noticed that when I was looking at my photos for the wiring harness, so I'm glad I caught this before the whole car was assembled. Having one upside down lets the wipers travel in different directions. Now, what we're looking at here is a box section that really is a box section before it hits a firewall on the engine side. And all that wiring harness, believe it or not, that we just saw, a lot of it lives in here. So I'm going to feed it through here. i got to go over the steering column and out through a hole on the other side here into the engine bay. And uh, I'll be really happy to see that uh, fully installed. Let's do it. All right, it's been a lot of research. I've been steering a lot of, a lot of wiring diagrams, but I want to see some action. I want to get this wiring harness in the car. So I figured out that on the main wiring harness, we have one section here that goes on the right hand side of the engine and it has these beautiful white wires. I don't want to get them dirty and I feed the whole thing from underneath here. There's a hole and that'll let me send some of the wiring to the right hand side of the engine bay here. There's another hole down here, conveniently enough. All right, so we're getting there. We're getting there. Now I have some body cables, what I mean by that, well these run down the right hand side of the body, there's the fuel center, some of the lights. That all happens on the right hand side, remember that from when it came apart. So I'm gonna send this to the right hand side as well, that's an assumption, but I think it'll be a good one. Okay, so we got that headed over to the right hand side of the car. We're coming in here. We've got all these wiring, all this, this will come right through this hole here. I should put this grommet back in here. Took it out. Um, these holes could be a little larger, I will not lie. Okay, so I've got that grommet in there. Looking good. So this will feed all through there. Uh, I was not, maybe I can just 
Oh, if I had smaller hands. Oh, jeez. I guess I should have taped this up. Oh, no, I'm in there. I think I'm going to make it happen. It's curved in a weird way back there. Inside, I'm not the hugest fan of. I just want it to be a nice T connection like this. Give me as much cable as, there you go, as I can get. So the more cable I get here, the easier it will be to wire the dashboard. So that's key. Now, for the left-hand side, we actually have a hidden hole up in here in this box section, which is atrocious. And then we got to go into the firewall section. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be its own challenge. See the dip switch here? Uh, that was a telltale that this goes down to the left-hand side of the car. Okay, now I'm struggling a bit because that section that I have with the plaster wrap over it doesn't want to go through the grommet inside the box section. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a lot of fun. Uh, I'm just going to persevere here, keep trying to force it through. It's pretty hard on the hands, I'm not going to lie. Uh, this is just about the most difficult wiring harness I've ever had to put in anything. Wow, that was a fight, but we have success. It's nice when a plan comes together. So you can see there's the ground when I first put on this piece. There's the saran wrap, which uh, helped a little bit, but it kind of fell off. And uh, we can move forward. I am uh, feeling a lot better about this now. That was a good couple hours of this day, that's for sure. All right, I'm not gonna lie, it's been a few days. I've had to do a lot of research, look at a lot of photos, and read a lot of forum posts on the routing for the wiring. And it mainly has to do so far with the body harness, so the wiring going rearward from the firewall here. So catching back up to where we were, this is the right-hand side of that harness we put for the dashboard. And I kind of wanted to get this done so I get the wiper motor in, believe it or not. But it's opened a huge can of worms. I'll show you what I mean. So if we look at this wire, it kind of goes down and connects. There's a connector there. And goes down to, pull, if we pull a focus, down to the sill. I'll show you what that looks like. There's two three-quarter inch holes that take all the wiring into the sill. And here's the sill member here. We can see it. It's uh, part of the door opening and it's not very tall it's just under an inch high and unfortunate for me it was remade on the bottom side so I had no holes no references no nothing so I had to come up and start getting my hole saw and putting holes in this thing and uh, that took a lot of research to figure out exactly what I wanted to do now the wiring after it goes into the sill for the rear here it kind of goes up see I put a conduit here and into the parcel shelf area the furniture area I would call this and then I needed to remove this panel here to my right to gain access to this area so it can run up and over and into the trunk. So yeah, that was that itself was a bit of a task, but there was a lot more to the story, believe it or not, because there was actually some wiring that needed to come out of a hole halfway through for the reverse light switch and for the fuel pump. And for the fuel pump itself, it went into the frame member from the sill member down and out of the frame member in and around the fuel pump. So yeah, quite a route. Now what I'm gonna do today is kind of show you my method. I use this aircraft wire, this thick aircraft wire. I tape the wiring to it and pull it through. Now what we're doing here is gonna be somewhat hard to explain, but in the simplest terms, this wiring harness that I have for this fixed head is a combination of the early car with no signals and the later car with signals. And so my wiring and all my colors are for the early car with no signals. And so what I have to do is run a second wire all the way from the front to the rear through the sill, of course, so we can get another path so that the control box can blink either side. So what we're gonna do is I'll tape it to my wire and we'll feed it through and we'll see if we get any success. 
Here we are, we're deep inside the XK120. This is the inner fender well. You can see the, the brake line and the fuel line running down the main chassis. This is the inner fender and this is that sill I'm talking about. Now I have two holes, one's for the body harness and associated wiring, and one's for the big negative battery cable which will come up through here as well. And that was definitely something I had to consider and make holes for that because the bottom of the sill is made new. So I got my aircraft wire. I'm gonna stick it in here and I'm gonna go fishing on the other side and see if I can get it anywhere near where it needs to be. So now you guys are in the car. I'm gonna try to feed that wire out of this sill access hole. And I think I can see it right there or it may have just dropped. Now this little pry bar here has been indispensable. It lets me get in these holes and kind of hook um, the wire out. Yes! All right. So, now that the cable's through, let's attach our wiring. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yes, there we are. Woohoo! That's the third wire through the cell. All right. And there we go. Five wires running to the back of the car, and that's really nice. Now, in lieu of just having the one green and purple stoplight wire, we have a black and green one as well, and they can be isolated and used dual purpose as the stoplights and the blinkers. Now, the other ones here, we have a ground, then we have a brown and red wire here for the reverse light, and brown and green for the running lights. So yeah, I'm really happy to get those in. And I guess one last thing is I'll mention the tools. I really do like this little snap-on pry bar. That really got me into these holes and scooping out wiring and those aircraft wires using snap-on pliers. These really thin ones that get right in there. Those are nice. Uh, yeah, these crimpers are amazing to put on the bullets. And the little wire cutters as well. Some essential tools for doing a job like this. All right, let's move on. All right, everybody, I've been pretty busy off camera, finishing up the body harness, all these pigtails running all through the body and finding their way to where they should be. Now the very tip of it there, that's the reverse and license plate light. And that comes in the bonnet lid here. There's also a light for the trunk space when it's opened that's actuated by a nickel plated switch down here. All fussy work to get right. Now there's wiring in behind this hinge panel, I'll call it, and there's a special clip under here. I'll show you what that looks like. Now there's a sender wire here. I don't know how this went originally. I just kind of made it up with these clips. If anybody knows the correct routing, please let me know, but this seemed to make a lot of sense. And then you can see here that for the, for the, for the rear tail lights, the wiring kind of goes on the inside fender and those loop clamps down there. So one of the next steps I want to do to finish this trunk off is put in these wooden panels. Now I have a question if anybody knows. I'm kind of curious, did they run felt underneath these all the way around or how did they seal these? Because I'd really like to avoid exhaust gases getting up and into the cabin. And this whole car is just kind of patched together at the back from the factory. So I'm curious how they thought we would seal these off. So we can move into the inside. Not a whole lot's changed in here, except I did run the auxiliary wire for the for the um, for the interior lights. So there's one on each side. They kind of run on the C panel. So you can see my routing here. Kind of went down this this uh, partial shelf area, and there's another light here, of course, on the passenger side. Then I ran it through this channel here, a very circuitous route, all the way down into this side cross member for the dashboard, and out here, and that's. One of the only wires that really differentiates this car from the Roadster. All right, now I'm happy to report I got something new just landed here in the shop. It's this cylinder head that belongs to a 1961 E-Type that we're gonna be rebuilding here. And it just came from the machine shop. 
So let's have a look. The, the, the hold downs. So the work here was done locally at a machine shop called Cords. And they put in one new guide for us because this one had a speedy sleeve on it and it was rotating it. The cam was eating it away. So they put in a new guide here and also the hold down kit. So that's nice to have the machine shop do that. They have nice fixtures to do that. And they also put in new guides for all the valves and then cut the seats. So it should be interesting to see the result. This has been soda blasted. So that's why it looks nice and clean. See, it's the original head to the car. R1500, wow, that's a low number, isn't it? Holy moly. So we did get the, the, the surface, the deck skimmed for an MLS gasket, so it should be a pretty nice surface. Let's have a look. Here we go, what does it look like? Wow, look at that. Oh my God, this is the best part, isn't it? Holy moly, that's a beautiful thing. Oh my God, what do you think? Wow! Oh, I, ever done, I, I love that. Oh wow! And all the seats cut, multi-angle cut. Isn't that wonderful? Look, there's been some moisture in this one, eh, in the past. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is amazing. Well done, Cords and Shawnee Cords and Rocky. Good job, guys. That's amazing. This is a lot been taken off this head. Yeah, that this head is almost null. Wow. So what we did was um, I had the customer who's actually doing the final assembly on this order an MLS gasket that was thick enough to make up the difference here because we do not want the valves touching the pistons, do we? Look, you see my, you can see, you can see reflections in this. Compression would be super high too. Yeah, I would, yeah, that's right, compression as well. That's amazing. All right, so the first thing for the head is it's going to get a trip into the parts washer. I'm gonna clean this thing out as best I can, and then we can go to paint. So uh, let's get into it. So the first step I wanna do on this cylinder head is finish clean it. Now I know the machine shop have their own finish cleaning processes, but I just wanna be sure that nothing is left inside all the cavities inside the cylinder head. So it's gonna get a washer in our parts washer. We've modified this small little CUDA parts washer and this thing just barely fits in here, but we're gonna get away with it. And uh, this is a really good way to go. This is like having a dishwasher for parts and it's totally essential. So let's just close down the hatch and make sure the turntable's on and run it for 15 minutes. Time for the lipstick on this cylinder head and I'll show you my dividing lines, just where I like to mask. I use these old XJ cam covers to kind of do my dividing line for the valley here. From the factory, these areas kind of had overspray, but I like to make a slightly neater job of it. What else we got? Oh, we got nickels down in the valley here. Don't want to get the spark plug holes and threads full of paint. And just like the factory, queen side up, people. Remember that, queen side up. Got to your queen side up. And there's a number again. Uh, let's spray this thing. So I have to apologize here, I am jumping ahead. The cylinder head is done, I've completely assembled it. I've done numerous cylinder heads on camera before and I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. It's my first pumpkin head and it just looks like a work of art, a functional work of art. And the machining was so beautiful as well. So I'm really happy with this one. So let's get back to the XK120. I got some packages. Let's see what arrived. Gonna change directions here, everybody. I thought my next task was gonna be unboxing all these great parts from the great Jaguar suppliers all around the world and fasten them to the XK120. But instead, that E-type in the back there it turns out it's going to be a lot more work than we first anticipated and we'll get into that so it was originally in just for wheels and tires and a radio install you can see i've started the radio install here into the console and this is a jaguar classic infotainment system that is drop dead gorgeous against the magnolia upholstery that my friend jeff chrysler did we'll get into that 
Now it kind of looks like a vintage bulb plunked until you turn it around. Then we have a lot of wiring, a lot of pinouts for accessories, for antennas, external mics, GPS. So it's going to be a, quite the adaption from this into the classic Jaguar, but I think it's going to be possible. Oh, it looks so great. All right, so before we get into the Jag itself, we can have a look up on the hoister. My dad is working on a Canadian Mini. So they extended the life of the Mini here in Canada by putting on these bumpers. It's a factory original bumper to meet minimum ride height or minimum bumper heights on the car. And it's getting a replacement rear subframe. The old one here is all rusted out. Really typical for these Minis to rust out, eh? Just, what was it? Just no oil and a lot of moisture back here. No paint. But yeah, that's the original subframe. It's coming out, new one going in. Now on to the E-Type. So it was initially in for wheels and tires, so I ripped those off as soon as I could. And I noticed that there was some grinding on the wheel right here. See that? And then my dad had a look at the knockoff. He's noticed that there was painting and grinding in the knockoff. So that's no good. What had happened is these are really cheap knockoffs. And I'll show you a video. When you tighten these fully down, the wheel is still loose on the hub, which is a real no-no. So what do we got here? It's kind of a cascading, um, cascading amount of replacement here because I got to replace the knockoffs this wheel is no good. Luckily, the previous owner only grinded one of them. So this is gonna be on the spare now. And then I fitted these new XVS tires, Michelin XVS tires on the remaining four. And we'll put new knockoffs on there. These XVS tires are just the best rubber to go on an E-Type. Speed rated tubeless on an MWS wire wheel. I don't think it gets any better. Now this car, just having a glance at it, um, it was bought by my customer on Bring a Trailer, and it looks somewhat like the assembly was somewhat poor. They used the old hub, and for some reason or another, it looked like this hub was dropped on the ground with the wheel off. See that? So that needs replacement. No doubt about that. And then I went to disconnect the battery, looking at the radio wiring, and the battery's leaking, so I've got to replace that. But everywhere I look on this car, there's a lot of work. For instance, See this bumper fitment here? It's way proud of the body and the guard isn't set up right. It's kicked towards the center and the motif is loose. It's just sitting in there. So that assembly needs to be worked on. And this is really kind of a signpost. These are really showing me a sign of what's to come. I think there's gonna be a lot of checking to do on this car before we can comfortably let our, our, our our owner drive it down the road. Now, Jeff Chrysler, right way heritage trimming, has put in a Magnolia interior into this car, and it's just a die for. I'll show you some pictures of the final result. Of course, I have it here in partial disassembly for the radio. And I mean, yeah, just look at that door panel and the sill. What beautiful work Jeff does. Thanks, man. This is truly outstanding. So have a light in here because when I got to the car, this whole panel was just being held on by the upper screws, which is a big no-no. And then when I did pull it down for the first time, it is a mess. Now, you might think, oh, that looks okay. Um, you know, you can service this, and that's true, and there is a lot of access here. But the problem is that Jaguar from the factory kind of tied this down and fixed all this wiring to the panel so that when it, when it pivots, it doesn't go in contact with the fuses or anything like that. So I definitely have to button this up, get it looking right. And uh, the main ammeter wires here should be pointed straight up so they don't interfere with the bracket. So I have a bit of a mountain to climb with this car. We still have yet to really diagnose what's going on under the hood and underneath it. So uh, I'll keep you guys posted. But yeah, the unexpected uh, things you can find when you buy an E-Type on, uh, on an auction site, like bring a trailer, it's uh, sometimes you just need to do the final bit of fit work that the previous owner didn't complete. Okay, so we're inside the car now. 
And let's see how we're gonna do this. The first thing I wanna do is the ammeter and these big thick wires coming straight from the alternator. They should be shooting straight out. So uh, let's start taking those off. Sorry, my lighting's not the best here. Um, hopefully there's a lock washer under this nut. Otherwise, uh, oh, there is. Okay, that's nice. So the reason why I'm doing this also is because there's a sub harness in here. We'll see that. And I want to put that in the right place. I also want to clean up this corrosion so this gauge gets a good ground. Yeah, so the way that this is all kicking up and over is totally not right. And uh, we're going to see how close we can get this. Just don't want to lose any of this hardware. Okay, see you later, Gage. There it is, that's out. So now, this is free, so that's good. Oh my, what's going on here? What do we got here? Oh, oh no. What is that? What's going on there with this connection? Let me just put this hardware down. What's going on here with this? What is that? Oh no. Okay, so got to repair this little sub harness. Uh, that won't fly. That's no good. I don't know why it's covered in. It looks burnt. Oh man, what is going on with this car? Okay. okay, so we can sneak this out of here now and we'll tape it back together, route it properly. Uh, these two wires are supposed to be together and I got to repair the end add it to the job here so now what do we got looking pretty good I have an errant ground wire here um geez you see the thing is this main harness is supposed to be tucked down in here um, uh, now there's supposed to be two loop clamps here on either side as well that hold this harness kind of like this so I might be able just to leave everything where it is and just loop that up neatly oh sorry you can't really see that uh, yeah this is good it's almost out i think i can disconnect this red and purple and the ignition switch oh my god look at that oh no look at that cable there it's totally split open on white oh man that's just because it's this hasn't been fixed in the car properly it's been chafing look at that that is so atrocious Oh my my, holy smokes. Okay, so I gotta repair that wire. There's no two ways about it. Okay, so that's coming out. That's part of this harness. Uh, am I just gonna take everything off of this panel? It's really looking that way. Uh, I'll show you the picture just while I'm undoing this of the last one I did. You can kind of see the way that all the wiring is held in with two loop clamps and the main harness is actually nestled in with all the gauges and switch gear and that's really what I'm aiming to do here Although I want to really tidy it up because it's uh, eminent failure we I see I've seen a few eminent failure spots so far with this and it's not something I want my customer to experience a dashboard fire uh, that would be really uh, awful you wouldn't be able to get into the dashboard in time to put it out it would just be a total loss and when I see wires that are that are broken like this do you see that that is just a sign that this thing was ready to go and car fires are no joke the Lamborghini Mira is kind of known for going up in flames and you know you can't have collector cars catching fire and this kind of wiring and setting up correctly is all part of the process. So it's all coming out, guys. Sorry. Um, it's just the way it has to be done. It's just a, it's not a waste of a harness. It's just a waste of time, really. Is that it? Come on out. Come on out. Yeah, we're free. Just one thing I noticed here after opening and closing the door a few times, and that's that the door seal has fallen away from the body. I see a lot of adhesive in here, including silicone, which is not right. So I have to clean this all up and re-glue this back in. Kind of a pain, but it's something that has to be done right. Otherwise, it'll just keep falling off. 
All right, got the dash here on the table, and I'm so glad I got this far into it. Definitely the ammeter here had some event in the past, and it's uh, corroded this whole area, so it must have been getting pretty hot. Now the previous harness, they didn't clean any of the connections, and as a result, definitely got a burned out ammeter wire here where it connects to the ignition. So I'm glad I have in stock a new wire, because that one was fully compromised. There's no way, I thought I could repair it, but there's no way it's toast. Now I'm also glad I'm in here because there's a lot of loose switches I noticed. Even the ignition switch was loose, which is a pet peeve of mine. So I'm gonna be able to tidy this all up. I'll get the new wire installed here, clean it up, and you can see the result and we can put it back in the car. Okay, I've been doing some work to the ammeter here. Definitely cleaned up those contacts. Probably the most important con two contacts on the whole car. And I also put some um, heat shrink around the studs there. This is what they did from the factory to ensure that the wires don't come in contact and fuse together and burn the car down. So yeah, glad to have those on. And as an extra precaution here, I'm gonna use this Worth product. So you use, I'm gonna use oxidization remover here. Just give it a spray on each one. And then once that's dry, there's actually this thing called oxidization protection OS, and that'll go on after it dries. Just to be sure that the most important connection on the car stays nice and clean and free of corrosion. Making good progress. You can see the new wire in here. One of the most important wires in the car actually. And it's the first thing that goes on this assembly because it kind of tucks down and underneath everything else if that makes sense. It's kind of unusual how it splays out and around the ammeter, but that's so another connection can slide in right here. I also cleaned the base plate. The base plate is how all these gauges and switches ground. So it's, that's pretty important as well. But yeah, I'm happy with this progress. I think now I can go back in the car. Okay, back in the car here, there's two loop clamps that hold the wiring harness and I've tried to get it in the right position, but we'll see. So now I'm gonna bring back the main dashboard into the car. I'm gonna get that, the first one that goes in is the alternator wiring, which is here. And it actually isn't retained by either of the loop clamps, but it has to go underneath all the wiring. It's the first one that goes on. Just fighting the old wiring here. Oh, come on. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, I gotta get this routing right. I've been busy, so I got the correct routing here for the alternator harness. You can see it kind of nestles in between the ignition switch, the cigar lighter, and then snakes around in between the gauges and top loads the ammeter. And these have to be secure. This has to go 100,000 miles or more without wiggling loose. If these wiggle loose, the car can catch fire. So it's super important to get this all set up correctly. So yeah, really good lesson there on uh, late model E-type wiring. There it is, that's the secret sauce. So yeah, I'm gonna put this all together and I'll show everybody the final result. Look at that, completely rewired the dashboard as per the factory specs. And I'm really glad I went through the entire dashboard because we found that burnt wire, which makes me a little nervous. You know, I know that this is all good and I can see that my fuses are all good, but I don't know how much I trust the rest of the wiring to preserve the work here. Um, I'm just gonna have to be very diligent, hook up the battery, check, the starter switch which had previously melted all the wires and just go about this in a careful manner because uh, this car was not assembled well. I'm really not impressed with what got delivered here but I'm really happy with the progress. I'll put it that way. All right, I'm at the left-hand front here. I've got a beautiful MWS spinner knockoff. Trying to put it on the car here, I found that it just only goes a few turns and then it locks up. And why is that? That's because the hub was obviously bent. See, it only goes on a little bit. And obviously the person that was working on this didn't want to go through the correct job, which should be replacing the hub. Instead, they got the anger grind, angle grinder out, sorry. They start grinding the wheel and the knockoff. And 
that is really, really poor mechanics. That is a safety issue. It's egregious. And the more I'm looking at this car, I'm thinking that it was a trouble car. Nobody really ever got this thing to run right ever. And they just sold it with all of its problems, undisclosed on Bring a Trailer. I'm going to end this one with a rant. Let's go for it, guys. All right, everybody. How do we conclude this one? Buying a lemon on Bring a Trailer? Lots of comments on how it was well built and drives well. And as you can see, it's gross negligence. There is way too much wrong with this car. It was ready to catch fire, turn into a fireball, and careen off the road because of the poor assembly. So what are we gonna do about this? Well, I'm gonna live and let die on Bring a Trailer. There are a lot of keyboard warriors on there, a lot of armchair mechanics, and don't believe, I wouldn't believe a word on there. It's heavily moderated so that if you try to say something negative about a car, it's flagged as non-constructive, even though some of those comments are the most constructive parts. They just, it sucks because it devalues the car, right? So kind of just make sure you know what you're buying and have somebody like me go through it to make sure that those hard-earned dollars are spent right. So what are we gonna do here? Well, let's have a look at what we got first. You know, like I just looked under the hood here for the first time today. No battery hold down. That just tells me right there an amateur was doing this. I see black brake fluid, yuck. I see busted motor mount. Everywhere I look here, there's issues. I see a wiring harness that isn't strapped down. So that wiring harness down there, see that pretty wiring harness? It's supposed to be strapped to the, to the frame. And uh, there's nothing holding it on. Instead, it's just sitting on the suspension. Woohoo! <laughs> That's pretty hideous. Also, the cooling level's down. So why is the cooling level down? Is this thing um, eating cooling? Is there a leak? I don't see a leak on the ground. So why is the coolant level down? I'm curious about that one. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna look at all these things. We'll go all around this car and we'll fix all these items. Get this car running right, make sure it's safe. I know the suspension needs work as well. And my client is a great client. He's happy to get these things done and make this car right. I'm gonna suggest maybe he asks for some of his money back because I think this car was slightly misrepresented. What do you guys think? I'll leave a link in the description for the Bring a Trailer listing. You can see the discourse yourself if you're into it. But yeah, that's it. That's it for this video. A lot of different stuff there. We had XK120 to E-Type work, and I will try to follow up with this one, and we can see just how much more work it needs. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.